I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 568. Microsoft finally confirmed the Zune HD, and I have to say it's a beautifully designed portable player. It kind of looks like the first iPhone, only sleeker. It'll have an OLED touchscreen built on Windows CE. We don't know yet about capacity, but since it'll be using flash memory, I'm guessing maybe 8, 16, or even better, 32 gigabytes. Microsoft says Zune HD is created to go head-to-head -head with the iPod Touch, and thus it'll have an Internet Explorer browser. Microsoft is usually pretty good about adding a feature or two that Apple doesn't. On the Zune HD, the special feature will be HD Radio. Microsoft will also integrate the Zune brand into the Xbox Live Video Marketplace. In the United States of America, our elections are serious matters. When we vote, we expect our votes to count, and the idea that someone or some group would tamper with the system is just not something we take lightly, especially when we're electing a new American Idol. <laughs> According to the New York Times, AT&T provided phones with free text messaging services and lessons in casting blocks of votes at parties organized by fans of Chris Allen. A spokesperson for AT&T said, in Arkansas, we were invited to attend the local watch parties organized by the community. A few local employees brought a small number of demo phones with them and provided texting tutorials to those who were interested. AT&T reps taught Allen fans how to send 10 or more text messages at the same time, and again, the costs of the power texts were free. As a supporter of Adam Lambert, I demand a revote! I'm just joking, I don't really care. But wouldn't that be an awesome rating stunt if Fox did it? Better news for AT&T is that Engadget just put mobile broadband cards and services from Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, and AT&T to a head-to-head -head test. They say in terms of data transfer speed, AT&T's download rates obliterate the other guys and their upload rates are stronger too. With AT&T, Engadget testers averaged 239.01 kilobits per second down and 77.9 kilobits per second up. With Sprint, the average was 121.7K down and 36.94K up. T-Mobile, whose service isn't yet Mac compatible, scored 127.33K down with 54.05K up. Verizon averaged 102.9K down with the second best up speed of 63.22K. Averages were taken six times in six urban, suburban, and rural locations. Obviously, your results based on your usage patterns could be very different. The sad part of the whole state of mobile broadband is that all four companies cap the data at five gigabytes of throughput per month, and while AT&T got the best speed scores in the test, their overage fee of 49 cents a megabyte is by far the most egregious. And Gadget's post about their testing is pretty thorough, and it's worth taking the time to read if you're in the market for a mobile broadband solution. I have a link to the complete piece at www.geekbrief.tv. I think I'll probably be switching from Sprint to AT&T now because AT&T has also announced an upgrade that will increase HSPA data speeds to a potential 7.2 megabits per second. I've been a little bummed out by the Apple drought we've been experiencing this year, so even though this isn't a very big story, I'm going to do it. The $999 white 13-inch MacBook has new specs. The processor is faster, now 2.13 gigahertz. The RAM is faster, still 2 gigabytes. The hard drive is now 160 gigabyte. That's up from 120 gigabytes before. Now I feel so much better. The guys at OnOneSoftware.com were supposed to get me an advanced copy of their new iPhone app so I could show it to you in action, but they're understanding busy and I can't wait any longer to talk about it so just close your eyes and imagine unless you're driving in which case you probably shouldn't be watching Geek Brief right now anyway the new app is called DSLR remote and it allows owners of a Canon EOS DSLR to control the camera wirelessly from an iPhone or iPod touch in addition to the camera and the iPhone or touch you have to have a computer running the free companion DSLR remote server software and that computer has to be connected to your camera via USB this app will enable you to control the shutter speed aperture and white balance. You can fire the shutter, and if your camera supports live view, wait for it! You can get a live stream of the camera's viewfinder on your iPhone or iPod Touch screen. An intervalometer helps with time-lapse photography. The app will ultimately be $20, but for a bit after it's approved, On One will offer an introductory price of $10. If the app is well-received, they'll be making a version for Nikon shooters, too. Details are at ononesoftware.com. That's a pretty long brief, I think. Next week, we'll be welcoming mean some new sponsors, but for now, and even when I don't mention it, the brief is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Using my promo codes GB1, GB2, and GB3 helps keep us in food and electricity, and it saves you money too. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Callie Lewis.